Well, welcome back. Today, I am going to give you probably one of the most important talks that we have with fat and loss clients. Uh, pretty much inevitably, when you start a journey trying to lose body fat to change your lifestyle, what you're gonna run up against is what we talked about a couple uh, days ago, talking about meal prep, changing your nutrition, doing all these things, and you realize this doesn't align with my current lifestyle, and there's some friction there. And not only is there friction with, man, I kind of got a little bit of a learning curve as we saw with meal prep, there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of those things going on, uh, but there's also this mental friction. I'm sure maybe you've probably experienced this a little bit already yourself, but what's happening is you have these thoughts and these ideas and these connotations in your head about nutrition. And most of the time, they're not true. There's a lot of things about nutrition that are not true. Uh, with nutrition, exercise is one thing. With nutrition, you can't not eat. You cannot exercise, you can change how you exercise, you can do all these other things, but you have to eat. So, and, and not only is this part of our culture, is there a lot of reasons why we eat, which we're gonna talk about in a second, all of those different reasons so you can identify them. But it can be also be connotated a lot of times, and exercise is this way as well, with a lot of really negative things. Um, there's a lot of really bad things that we can tie to our nutrition, and we can take those on as part of ourself. And that causes a lot of discomfort. That's why a lot of people, they don't wanna talk about their nutrition. They don't wanna talk about losing weight. They don't wanna talk about these things because there's some uncomfortable feelings that, be can, that can be brought up whenever we do that. So if that's happened to you, whether you've realized it now or, you're, or before, or you're just realizing it now, that's kind of what you're up against, I really want to work through this for about 10 minutes with you and speak to this experience and help you get over this guilt that you feel on the weekends, this um, shame that you feel about eating a certain way or, or failing or not living up to a standard. So inevitably, like I said, we have this conversation with almost all of our fat loss clients and they always say one of these things. They'll say, I did so bad this weekend or I ate terrible or I messed up. Right, I was at a birthday party or I went out to Mexican or I overdid it or I had two Oreos or this or that. And what they actually did always varies a little bit, but the common theme is always that they feel guilt and shame around this you know, experience that they have pretty much every single weekend. So what we see happening is, let's say you start eating better, it's Monday, you're meal prepping, you're doing all these things. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday go by, you're experiencing a little bit of stress because what's happening? You're making this massive change to your lifestyle, right? Your brain's learning constantly, everything at mealtime. What does stress make you wanna do? It makes you wanna eat, right? So you're like, man, I'm really looking forward to going out this weekend, whatever, but then you start to think about this situation and you think, well, shoot, how am I supposed to eat out when I'm doing all this work and I, I, I you know, went through all of this discomfort all week long, I'm gonna ruin my progress right, if I do this this weekend. But we don't wanna not go out with our friends, we don't wanna not go out with our family or go on date night or go to our favorite place. It's like, if I have to give up my favorite place, is this even worth it? But you want this so bad, you've been working so hard and you're at this decision point. Inevitably, everybody goes with what they usually do. They go out to eat, they do uh, you know, whatever it is that they've been doing for the last three, four, five, 10, 20 years. And they go there and they have this discomfort, this shame about this food that they wanna eat that's right in front of them. So we have this discomfort, our brain doesn't like it, so our brain, like it's like we black out. And it's like, oh, I'll just, it's like we eat real quick, so it's like we can trick ourselves. And then it's like we wake up from a coma 45 minutes later and go, oh my gosh, what did I do? So we start to think, okay, I did this thing that I, that's bad that's, that I'm not supposed to do, and what am I gonna do about it now? And as humans, we don't have a very good relationship with grace. We believe that, we believe in justice, we believe that if something was committed, a penalty must be paid. Penance must be paid in accordance with whatever crime was committed or whatever act was committed. Um, so when it comes to food, it's like we did this thing that we've labeled now as bad, and since we've done something bad and we're bad, we have to pay penance. So how do we, how do we pay penance? for this thing because there's no food police, there's no person to like pay a fine to or to do some push-ups for. By the way, don't use exercise as punishment. That is one of the worst things you could possibly do. 
So what do we, what do we let happen? We say, well, I'll, I'll guilt myself. I'll feel guilty because I'm not a psychopath. I'm not going to just up and go back to normal tomorrow. I did a bad thing. I need to feel guilty. I need to feel bad. And for some people, they feel bad for a day. Some people, it's three days, whatever. And most people, Monday is kind of like your reset cut off. And you'll feel like, oh, okay, it's normal to go back to normal now. And if when we look under a microscope at those decisions, those situations, and we look at the meal that they had on date night or the slip up that they had on the weekend sitting on the couch watching football, what usually we find is that those things in and of themselves do not put us that far off on track. So one of the things that's very freeing a lot of times for people to realize is when we go and look at your average calories for the week and how it is affected by one meal, it barely moves the needle. You gotta do a lot of damage. You gotta really go off track. Now, some people do that. Some people will eat far too much, uh, you know, at a, at out to eat, not realize like how insanely high the calories are. And it's like, hey, we have to do damage control there. We can still do it. Um, that is a scenario, but most of the time, 70% of the time, that's not the scenario. And if we had just let that instance be and let it happen, you'd be totally fine. You would be right on track with your goals. But we have this idea that it's not just about those numbers. It was bad and it has to be bad. I can't eat those foods. So I need to feel guilty. And then what do we do when we feel guilty? We want to alleviate that guilt. So then we stressy and then we eat more of these foods and then we spiral and then it gets worse and worse and worse and worse until we either give up entirely or we decide to get back on the horse another Monday. Tell me that's not your experience. Tell me that's not if you're somebody who's been trying to lose body fat for a long time, I'm sure you've been stuck in that cycle. So what I want to relay to you is two concepts here today that will free you from that one. I guess three, because one I've already mentioned, and that's that when we put these things under a microscope in terms of just your physiology and the calories and all that stuff, a lot of times it actually doesn't matter, so you can understand that. Um, but the, the second one is that there's no such thing as a good or bad food or a healthy or unhealthy food. Let that sink in. Let, let, think about that for just a second. Do you believe there is a healthy food or an unhealthy food or a good food or bad food? Like, well, berries and avocados and say, all oh, this stuff is good, it's healthy. But what if I eat nothing but ice cream and cereal and then I have some berries on the weekend? I have an avocado. Is that healthy or unhealthy? You're gonna say, well, that's unhealthy. Well, what if I eat nothing but steak and kale and all these good things all week long and on the weekends I have a little bit of ice cream or I have some rolls from Texas Roadhouse? Is that healthy or unhealthy? You're gonna say, well, that, that sounds pretty healthy. I mean, all week you did good, right? Good, here, listen to me now. So. What does that tell us? That tells us that it's the summation of our entire diet that creates health and creates results. And it's a spectrum and it's kind of a moving target. So for us to sit here and label a food under a microscope, good or bad. Now, of course, you know, if we take a food, we make it say, hey, if we, this makes up the majority of your diet, your diet is then probably going to be healthy or unhealthy. You know, if, if most of your calories are coming from ice cream, it's probably not going to be good. If most of your calories are coming from red meat and whole eggs, probably going to be super healthy, right? Um, so yes, there, we can draw some conclusions there, but in and of itself, a food cannot be good or bad. And food has no moral value, right? You're not a better person for eating better. You're not a bad person for eating worse. Should we take care of our bodies? Yes. But in modern day times, as you've learned, that's a little bit more complex than just eating before we didn't have unhealthy food choices until a hundred years from now, right? We, this is relatively new in the scope of human history that we've had unhealthy foods. They did not exist because the only things we could possibly eat came from the earth. We had no labs, we had no factories, we had no things to manufacture these foods that would cause us issues. That's why uh, obesity was a circus act in the 1900s. Like people, people weren't overweight and even as recent as the 60s, it really wasn't a thing. And there's a confluence of factors that have caused that. Our food system obviously is a huge part of it, but there's no more morality in those things at all. So you can't be bad by eating food. You can't do bad. You can't. And, and if you're saying like, well, well I'm not going to get results. It's like, well, when we really average out those calories and we put them in, yes, maybe you slow your progress down a little bit, but you're not going to ruin your progress from, from doing one meal. Now, is it possible if you eat seven large pizzas? Yes, of course you can go backwards, but you still have the ability to go forwards. So the other thing that I really want to stress here, this is the second piece that hopefully um, this will bring this home for you, 
is that we eat for a variety of reasons. We don't just eat for nutrition. When you let this app, this, this MyFitnessPal rule your life, that's out of balance. That is just as bad. It's called orthorexia. There's a name for that. We have anxiety about that. A lot of people experience this. You know, I, I, unfortunately, in the fitness industry, especially in competitive bodybuilding, these people have severe, I mean severe orthorexia. It's a, it's a full-blown eating disorder. That's not good either. And every, the outside world looks at that and says, well, they're so healthy and they're in such great shape. They look so good. They are miserable. They are absolutely miserable, right? So we have to understand balance is the ticket here. Balance is the key. Now, most people are out balance the other direction. They don't pay enough attention to what they eat. They, they, they don't have the education around what is a healthy food, what foods should you know, they be consuming on a more regular basis, or they don't have the tools and the preparation and the habits of, to actually execute on those things. But we eat for a variety of reasons, not just for nutrition, not just for to, to hit our macros or to get enough micronutrients. Those things are great. It's important. It's part of this equation. But we also eat socially. When's the last time you've been to a party that didn't have any food? That party sucked, didn't it? What, did you see me at that party? No, you didn't because I don't go to those parties because those parties are terrible, right? We eat socially. We, we eat to celebrate. When I graduated college, the very first thing I did was we drove. We went to Fox's Pizza in Palmer, Ohio. sat on the river. It was my favorite thing to do, right? So I was, I was super excited to celebrate. Now, do I do that every single day? Is that my main, main source of nutrition is Fox's? No. Of course it's not, it, but, but it's a place where we, we can go to celebrate. Um, you know, if I were to take that away, would that be healthy or unhealthy? I'd say that'd be really unhealthy if I remove that celebration that I have. If we remove um, social instances where, where we share, share lunch or share a meal with somebody, you know, uh, that's really unhealthy to remove our connection with another human being. And also understanding that food is a very powerful stress management tool a lot of people are like, you know, I, I'm not supposed to stress eat, I'm not supposed to be this, I'm not supposed to be that. When we talk about stress management, as you, you know and you're learning, you know, that is a, a really big different piece in terms of managing your stress, but food's very good at that. Food is very good at managing your stress. The problem is, is when we're too stressed all the time, when we're chronically stressed, and then we feel the need to stress eat, because it is the most powerful thing that we can do. You know, and, and you're gonna be somewhere on that spectrum. Maybe you go out to lunch, uh, with your coworkers every single day. And it's really hard to say no to that. So you get to choose between saying no or sometimes being shamed in those social situations. Um, and I'll give you a really quick tip on that here in a second. Um, but you have, to, you have to sometimes pick and make these decisions. And when you're stressed out, you know, maybe you're that person and it's like, I really need to manage my stress. But we can find where our biggest issues are and address the, the secondary issue or the real primary issue. The eating is, is sometimes a secondary thing. And that is a wisdom thing. That takes a little bit more thinking. That's not a meal plan. I can't hand you that you know, over a counter and say, okay, go do this, right? That's why so many people fail. They don't understand these things. But the number one thing for you to really take away here is that you should not feel guilt around the way that you eat, whether it's good, healthy, bad, it produces results with your physique or it doesn't. You know. Obviously, we know when we overeat and we gain a lot of weight, that makes us look a certain way, makes, it feel a certain, makes us feel a certain way. And then society has these ideals that are paired with the result of sometimes poor nutrition and things that are unhealthy. And so we pair those together and we think that, well, you know, there's body shame, there's all this, and, and I'm not going to go down that road. But that's where a lot of this comes from. And we need to just understand that a lot of these ideas aren't our own. And we need to think for ourselves and figure these things out for ourselves and give us some room to breathe. Like give yourself a chance to get, you know, these things figured out and not get them out or try and work them out under pressure, not try to work them out feeling terrible about yourself. Cause who the heck wants to eat healthy and go to the gym if all it does is make you feel terrible, right? People think that's lost on me. People think like, oh, you're a bodybuilding gym, you're this, you're that. You, you guys don't understand. And it's like, this is our primary focus with our clients is giving them freedom and fitness. Our mission statement at Uplift Fitness, at our health club, if you don't know, is we are building a community of strong people who celebrate freedom and fitness. We don't want to hand you more chains. We don't want to make you feel worse about yourself. We want to help you figure these things out, right? So hopefully that gives you some mental tools, helps give you some context around the situation, helps, helps you give yourself some grace. And I told you I'll give you a tip. If you go out with your friends 
and you, you decide to make a choice. By the way, we have an eating out guide that's really, really great. If you haven't grabbed it already, please grab it so you can look through, find your favorite restaurants, find some low calorie options. Um, you know, it's not quite as fun, but you can still go out to eat and make, uh, basically do damage control and not get over on your calories, right? Um, is it perfect? No, but it's practical and it makes a lot of sense in reality. So if you, you make one of these choices, so you're gonna go out, go out to eat with your coworker, with a friend, with a cousin, or it's Thanksgiving, um, the best thing to do when they say, you know, hey, uh, you know, why are you you're trying to get healthy? You know, you need to eat more or whatever. Um, it's right here on the back of your hand. Just take that and usually somewhere on the face is best. And you just be the judge on the speed. But if you connect those two points, um, it's really cool. I don't know if that's a biohacking thing, but that usually makes that stop. Um, you know, I, I fully endorse, endorse that method. So give that a shot. Let me know how it tries. Um, no, truth be told, that is a very, very hard situation to deal with is, is family. Um, but lean on your support group, lean on your people. Um, you know, ask them why they're making that comments. 9% of the time, it's because they don't feel good about themselves and you're putting pressure on them to change their life and they don't want to change and they, you know, that people don't like that. Um, trust me, I'm a glowing symbol of that everywhere I go and people avoid me because of it. So. Um, so just understand that it's a them problem, not a you problem. And you can use that trick if you want to, it does work really well. Um, you know, I've wanted to use it on my brothers for a couple times, but, uh, that just comes with the territory. Uh, so be encouraged by your community, uh, at our health club, uh, the people who are alongside you and, you know, best case scenario, once you get on the other side of this, one of the things we do, uh, or we, we talk about our mission statement is celebrating freedom and fitness, not just finding freedom and fitness, when you celebrate it, you're pulling others in with you. So that person who is talking, uh, you know, in your ear about the way that you're eating one day might become, you know, or might fill in in your shoes. So that's a really exciting prospect, but hope that was helpful for you. If you have questions, if you'd like to talk more about that, please reach out. But, um, you're getting, uh, you know, close to halfway through here, I believe, uh, you're close to the halfway through Mark. So congratulations. Um, hopefully that clears some things up to you, solve some problems so you can get, uh, more and more progress and we will see you here in just a couple days for your next lesson.